Jumping into Texas A&M now. And A&M, this is another tricky, tricky spot. Because talent-wise, I mean, they are way, way up there. But, again, that schedule. That schedule is really difficult. Uh, let's open up the uh, the stats on them. Jimbo Fisher went 8-4 and four last year. Uh, quarterback play was bleh. Their offensive PPA per drive last year was number 93. Number 27 in rushing success rate. Um, and then they just were not explosive. They were number 73 in passing success rate. I think there's a lot of questions here. Uh, the OC, Daryl Dickey, has been there since Jimbo was hired. Uh, by the way, offense number 81 in returning production in the country, number 91 in returning production on defense. But again, number one recruiting class, you're going to expect some of those guys to jump in immediately. Average QBR last year was number 100 in FBS, just two spots ahead of Navy. Uh, that's not where you want to be. So now you got new guys in. You got Max Johnson coming in from LSU. You got Haynes King, who spent most of last year injured. And you got the freshman Connor Wiegman. Um, they were number 98 in passing PPA last year. You got to hope that any of those guys could be better. Uh, the running back, A-Chain, returns seven yards per rush. He isn't big, though. He's 5'9", 185. Offensive line does return four guys with 300-plus snaps. Outside of Anaya Smith, what skill player or tight end scares you? Like, maybe Evan Stewart? Uh, he's incoming freshman wide receiver. Um, let's talk about the defense. DJ Durkin takes over for Mike Elko, who left for the Duke head coaching job. DJ Durkin uh, was able to do some impressive things with Ole Miss, and now, of course, he's walking in with a ton more talent here. Uh, they've had, you know, it, Durkin had top 10 defenses at – Michigan at Florida, et cetera. So, like, when he's got talent, he's been pretty good. Defensive line got five guys with 142-plus snaps. Uh, three of them have 168 and less. Like, that's not good. Um, nobody has more than 326 snaps on that defensive line, but there is a ton of talent. Linebacker, you only really got two experienced guys. The secondary is loaded. You got four guys with 700-plus snaps. What is the defense going to look like without Oko? That's my question. Uh, how different is Durkin going to call this defense? Like, he's got a ton of talent to work with. But how different will it be, and how long will it take them to get acclimated? Because that non-conference schedule is pretty rough. Like, they'll be able to hammer Sam Houston State. App State, I would imagine they'll be able to run all over. But then you got Florida coming in in week three, and then you got Arkansas in week four. Uh, UMass, of course, late in the season. That should be an easy win. Is this team a year away? That's my question here. Uh, they beat Bama, but they lost to Ole Miss and Mississippi State last year. Like, you're being paid to be better than that. Uh, they're protected favorites in 11 games. I think a lot of that has to do with talent. You got eight games that are toss-ups, though. And, again, toss-ups, if you're new to the show, any game that is projected to be within one score. So the win total sits at 8.5. Uh, the over is minus 155. The under is plus 125. 14-1 to one to win the conference. 5.5 to 1, uh, plus 550 to win the division. And... You know, I'm looking at this. Is this team a year away? Right? That's that's my question here. You need the quarterback to hit. Uh, in order for that to happen, you've got to have somebody besides Anaya Smith step up at wide receiver. Like, you got to be a little more explosive. Offense was number 54 in pass rate. They were number 94 in percentage passing yards of total yards. Like, that's not good. Number 92 in 20-plus yard passing plays. Defense could see a ton of freshmen playing early. Uh, the schedule before the bye week? is pretty rough. Like, weeks two through six are going to tell us what this team is. Like, looking at the fundamentals, like, they could certainly be better at that. And and last year might have just been a quarterback thing, but penalties per game is number 93. Turnover margin, number 72. Uh, they were number 61 in giveaways per game. So, on top of that, like, for your turnover margin to be number 72, if you're number 61 in giveaways per game, uh, you're probably not doing so hot as far as takeaways per game. So you got to be kind of aggressive as far as that goes. You got a lot of talent now. You can be risky. And yeah, while I know the schedule is tough, like I like AM. I, I like talent. You you guys know that I tend to side with talent more than anything else. Uh, I've got AM going 10 and 2 this year. I really, really like the Aggies and how they have built this roster. Uh, if you got a strong defensive line, which I assume that they do, uh, based on the talent alone, I think they're going to be awesome. Like I think this team will be really, really good. I've got a loss at Auburn, which there's always one inexplainable loss somewhere. Uh, and then I've got a loss at Alabama. 
Like I, I expect them to start five and zero, and then when they get to Alabama, when they get to Tuscaloosa on October eighth, I think it's going to be nuts. Absolutely nuts. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.